You can remain conscious for up to 10 seconds after being decapitated thanks to the blood left in your brain. Greetings Nerd Squad, welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host Carl Monroe and in Zola Haya. I just summoned a demon because demons are cool. They're all the rage nowadays with the satanic temple becoming an officially recognized church. Oh, that's not what satanism is about? I need to return my membership pin. While the demons in the real world are cool, what about the ones we read about and see on our screens? Which of them can be considered supervillains? That's what we're exploring with today's list of the top 10 demons who are supervillains. Let's get started. In a tent, Dormammu. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Although he had been mentioned several times in dialogue along with his realm, the Dark Dimension, he only made his first appearance in Strange Tales number 126 and 127 in 1964. While Strange had been battling one-off mystic threats prior to this, Dormammu became a recurring Recurring villain for the character and a threat unlike they had ever faced before. He started with a starring role in a 15 issue storyline in Strange Tales number 131 to 146, and has made several appearances in other series like The Avengers, Defenders, Thor, and Hellcat. He also appeared in the Spider Man cartoon from the 90s and can be seen in the Venom saga where he returns Venom as symbiote and creates Carnage in order to help him escape the Dark Dimension. But thanks to Spider Man, Iron Man, and Venom teaming up, he was sent back along with Carnage and Venom. He didn't make his silver screen debut until 2016 in Doctor Strange, where he got in an eternal struggle with Strange until he was ready to leave Earth alone. Fun fact, Dormammu was actually mo-capped by Cucumber Patch and voiced by a mix of him and another unnamed British actor. And if you don't consider him a demon, you don't remember him being a former Lord of Hell. Yeah, it's a thing. In a 9, Nightmarica. You enjoyed the last time I brought characters in that weren't just from comics, so I figured I'd do the same here with Nightmarica. This female demon ghost is from my favorite childhood show that ended too soon, Danny Phantom, and is a parody of the Nightmare on Elm Street character Freddy Krueger. Originally, she was just a movie character inside the Danny Phantom universe, until Danny and Tugger decided to head to another girl's party instead of going to the movies with their best friend Sam, like they said. When Sam figures out what happened, she wishes for something to happen to the other girl named Pauline. When the ghost known as Desiree overhears Sam's wish, she brings Nightmarica to life along with two other ghosts in order to kill Paulina. She has the typical set of ghost powers, flight, invisibility, intangibility, and possesses supernatural strength, being able to throw someone across the room. She resembles Freddy Krueger but with green hair and claws because she's a ghost, you know? Her only other appearance is in the episode called Phantom Planet, the series finale, where she, spoiler alert, helps in turning the planet intangible to prevent a meteor that ghosts aren't able to touch go through the planet in order for the planet to be saved, since the ghost zone and our world are linked. God, I miss that show. Hashtag go ghost again. And an 8, Mephisto. Based on a demon from The Legend of Faust, Mephisto first appeared in the Silver Surfer number 3 in the Silver Age. The character made his silver screen appearance in 2007's Ghost Rider starring Nicolas Cage. Mephisto has been responsible for many an evil act in the Marvel Universe, including capturing the soul of Doctor Doom's mother, creating the Ghost Rider, which may not be considered evil even though he was posed as Satan, and even was Thanos' servant during the War of the Gems, but instead looking to gain that power for himself. He also managed to capture the soul of the Richards family, including Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, and their son Franklin Richards, who is basically a god. But he's also gone on a date with New Mutants member Magma, because apparently the force that created him also gave him emotions and desires, and we all know what that means. He wants to occasionally do human things. He was also summoned by Superior Spider-Man, Doc Ock inside Peter Parker's body, to get him to stop Spider-Man of Earth 44145. But as Mephisto replies, sorry, that's out of my jurisdiction. And it's seven, Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Pennywise, also known as It, is the main antagonist of Stephen King's novel It. Pennywise is a form of ancient cosmic evil that is also considered a demon by many, that preys on the children of Derry, Maine, since they're the only ones who can see him, roughly every 27 years or so. He has a wide array of powers, including but not limited to shape-shifting, going unnoticed by adults, bending reality, teleportation, and manipulation of objects and humans. In the novel, he starts his killing spree by taking the life of Georgie, the younger brother of protagonist Bill. The character is always watching his Prey, appearing several times in the background of both parts of the new movies. Pennywise was created when King asked himself what scares children the most, the answer being clowns. So he created one who was similar to the troll in the children's tale 3 Billy Goat's Gruff, but who inhabited a sewer system. There is no other explanation needed for this character as I'm sure we all know who Pennywise is, and he definitely deserves to be on this list. 
definitely a demon. And at six, Surtur. Surtur is a fire giant based on Surtur from Norse mythology. Surtur is a native to the land of fire demons whose name I won't even try to pronounce. He first appeared briefly in Journey into Mystery number 97 in 1963, but this was only to set him up as his first proper appearance was in Journey into Mystery number 99 that same year. The character made his silver screen appearance in Thor Ragnarok, where he was prophesied to be the destruction of Asgard, where Thor just laughs in his face, and then takes his crown to the trophy room of Asgard, only to set him loose to fulfill the prophecy in the climax of the movie in order to defeat Hela, the goddess of death, and his sister. But as Korg says, as long as the foundations are strong, we can rebuild this place. But oh no, those foundations are gone. That was a terrible chord voice, but whatever. The fiery demon stands at over a thousand feet tall and has power of apocalyptic proportions, surpassing those of Thor. Generating heat or near concussive force is like playing with a baby to him. He has the ability to transform his fingers into serpents, levitate, and travel through dimensions. He is on the same level as Odin, a skilled swordsman and warrior, and that tail is something to marvel. No pun intended. But I guess I left it in the script, so pun intended? And at five, Azazel. There are multiple Azazels that can be considered supervillains. There is the Marvel version, who first appeared in Uncanny X-Men number 428, who is the father to Nightcrawler, who is the member of the, sorry if I butcher this, Nefim, an ancient race of demonic mutants who were at constant war with their angelic counterparts. Azazel was in fact their leader, and has the powers of teleportation, shape-shifting, superhuman agility, night vision, and an advanced healing factor, immortality, telepathy, hypnosis, dark arts mastery, and sword combat mastery. These are incredible abilities, but if you're looking for a literal demon, look no further than the television show Supernatural. At first referred to as Yellow Eyes or the Yellow Eyed Demon, Azazel is literally a demon and is the reason the whole show began. This demon killed the main character's mother, hence why the family started hunting the Supernatural. Oh, I get it. He also ended up killing Sam's girlfriend, causing him to join Dean on his hunt to find their father. He was the driving force behind the first two seasons of the show, spoiler alert, meeting his end in the season 2 finale with the use of the Colt, a specially designed gun to kill anything with the use of special bullets, which was the only weapon they had to kill demons at that point. And at 4, Satan. Lucifer Morningstar is one of the most powerful beings in the DC Universe. While DC has had various depictions of the fallen angel, this interpretation debuted in the Sandman Volume 2 number 4 in 1989. The later Lucifer spin off would have him adventuring on Earth, Heaven, and other realms of his family's creation, and in uncreated voids after abandoning Hell and the Sandman. He would also later appear in The Demon, The Spectre, and other DC comics. After his abandoning of Hell, others have taken his place. Two angels, for example, even a human, and somehow even Superman had a brief rule over Hell. Lucifer made his first on-screen appearance in the Constantine film in 2005, but more recently in The Lucifer Show, where he has made an appearance as the devil in the CW crossover event Crisis on Infinite Earths where he grants Constantine, John Diggle, and Mia Smoke Queen, Oliver Queen's daughter from the future, the ability to go into purgatory and retrieve Oliver's soul to return it to his body after his death. This also confirmed that the series takes place on Earth 666, which if it hadn't of, I would have been livid and I would have started a riot, just saying. In a 3, Blackheart. The technical son of Mephisto, Blackheart was under his father's tutelage when he learned what not to do, and that he should be doing it anyway. He even took on the Daredevil and Spider-Man, but failed to corrupt them. But Blackheart wasn't happy being a prince of hell. He decided he wished to overthrow his father. So in an attempt to get help in doing so, he led Ghost Rider, Punisher, and Wolverine to Christ's town in an attempt to corrupt them. The three heroes ended up following Blackheart into his dimension for a final confrontation, where Blackheart pitched the idea. He first appeared in Daredevil number 270, in 1989 and has some pretty dope powers including superhuman strength, speed, durability, telekinesis, telepathy, levitation, interdimensional teleportation, size alteration, regenerative healing, energy generation, soul capturing which allows him to take the soul without needing permission, which is wrong. Coming from a ginger, always take souls with consent. He also has mind control, immortality, and penance stare immunity, so Ghost Rider can't really do that much to Blackheart. Jesus, this guy's pretty damn powerful. But again, take souls with consent. Penultimately, and number two, Lord Loss. Doing something a little different here. Lord Loss is a demon master and main antagonist of the book series The Demonata by Darren Shan. These books are incredible. If you like demons, which you clearly do because you're still watching this, I highly suggest you read it. These books were everything to me from grade 10 onwards. Anyway, he is the only character to appear in all 10 books of the series. Not necessarily present, but he's at least mentioned. And his appearance is that of nightmares. Pale red lumpy skin covers his body with 8 mangled arms and no heart. Instead, a whole 
filled with tiny venomous snakes. He has dark red eyes and even darker pupils. He doesn't walk. He floats above the ground with strips of bloody flesh hanging from where his feet should be. His skin is cracked all over and blood seeps through these cracks. He enjoys chess, even plays it for sport with humans who are infected with lycanthropy. If they win, he will cure one member of the family, but if they lose, he will torture them for very long periods of time due to the fact that he feeds on the suffering of humans, therefore isn't interested in mindless killing like other demons. At first, I pictured this demon wearing a suit. I don't know why, I just wanted to. But ever since seeing drawings of the character, I'm surprised I wasn't scared to death by these books. They are incredible. My favorite two are the second and third, Demon Thief and Slaughter. Again, highly suggest you read these books because they're amazing and extremely well written. God, do it. Finally, in at number one, Shumagorath. Shumagorath's first appearance was in Marvel Premiere No. 5 in 1972. His name was taken from the short story The Curse of the Golden Skull by Robert E. Howard, which features a dying magician invoking the iron-bound books of Shumagorath in A Curse Against Humanity. Fun! His powers include energy projection, reality manipulation, shape-shifting, levitation, teleportation, magical powers, and immortality. With the amount of people with immortality on this list, we could make a whole other list about demons who can't die. Shumagorath is one of the most powerful ancient demons to ever exist. Even Dormammu and Mephisto have said he is superior to them. The demon has unmatched power and was even once the ruler of Earth, until a time traveling sorcerer managed to banish him. He even managed to beat Doctor Strange, causing him to kill the Ancient One. This ultra powerful demon has rarely been defeated, and that is definitely deserving of the number one spot. There we have it friends, the top 10 demons who are super villains. Who do you want to see on this list? List and which number did you like the most? Let me know below and on your way down be sure you hit like and subscribe for daily nerdy content and ring that bell so you know when we upload. Thank you all so much for watching, I have been and shall remain Connor Monroe and I'll see you in another video.